Today's Pearson Workholding Q&A comes from Mike who asks, how do I know when to expand my business? That is a loaded question. So you can read lots of business books. You can have lots of people speaking into your life, whether it's mentors, advisors, consultants. But what has really worked for us when I've tackled this is to take the emotion out of it and replace it with a definitive path forward. Now, I'm going to use this word that you don't hear in this context often, but and maybe don't hear it too much in business, but it's the word pro forma. You're creating a something ahead of time. A lot of times the, the phrase will be used with a pro forma invoice. Hey, send me an invoice so I can pay it. Then once it's paid, we ship your stuff, right? Right? Like it's, it goes ahead of you. So you create different pro formas. So a pro forma might be stage one. I'm going to quit my job when my little side hustle makes me $3,000 a month. That's the minimum I need to just survive. Maybe I have a wife uh, or some savings that, that can supplement that income. So that would be like a, a, a step one, stage one, uh, op zero, op one type of pro forma. Next pro forma might be, I'm going to buy my first piece of equipment when this much happens in revenue or when I have this size space available to me. Or like for me, I didn't have a lathe for about six years. I farmed out all lathe work to local shops, brought it in. And if there were mill work, instead of paying them to do the mill turn portion of it, then I'd follow up and keep doing the milling. And so when you put out these pro formas with incremental things, it takes the emotion out of it. You may have a really great year or this is a tricky one. A great deal may pop up where it's too good to be true, you'd be a fool to pass up with on. But if you have that pro forma and you go, this doesn't fit my pro forma, I am making an emotional decision when I've already applied calm, rational brain power to the next step forward. It also takes confusion out of it for you personally, and it also gives something that you can hand off to different employees, different advisors to first of all, look at, revise, make small tweaks along the way because they're not gonna be perfect. You may have too much detail in there that just doesn't matter. So that might be a secondary agenda or wish list on your pro forma, but definitely have pro formas all the way out to retirement. One of the things that I think most people don't think about is the path forward in life or their career. I heard recently from a guy on a podcast talking about how your life, your career, any direction you're going should be like bowling without bumpers, right? We all know what bumpers are. When I go bowling with my kids, we put the bumpers in so there's no such thing as a gutter ball. It's more fun that way. But there's a difference between bowling with bumpers and bowling with intentionality, where you stand at the lane, you put your right foot on the arrow, you side in the lane, you take three steps forward at that, you go back with the ball, and then you aim for that third arrow from center, you know, or something like that, and you put this much spin, you wanna go right between the one and three pin or the one and two pin, whatever it may be called. That is intentionality. When you're not bowling with bumpers, you need to do that or the consequences go right to the gutter. So if you go throughout your career, or maybe you're a startup or a hobbyist with a direction, if you don't aim at those arrows, if you don't start at the right spot, if you don't choose the right weight of ball, what's gonna happen is you're just going to be aimlessly throwing things down your career path. And that lack of intentionality can shift you one way or another. Then you don't know where the gutters are. You don't really know if it's going the right direction, the wrong direction, and if you hit them, you think you're doing it right. You may have gotten lucky. That's certainly some of the things that I got lucky with that I had no plan, but you know, I thought, wow, if I just keep increasing sales, great. Of course, that's a good thing, but those are bumpers. What happens when I don't increase sales? Well, I can go back to that pro forma and go, sales haven't increased because I'm not here yet. What is required? Well, I keep losing profit margin because I'm sending these parts out, in my case, to a turn shop. I need to buy a lathe, hire a guy, control that, shorten my lead time, shorten the component cost or reduce the component cost, and then reinvest that money back into the company. That fits this pro forma. That's certainly what I did. That's certainly what my peer group of business owners have done and advised me on. It's worked 
great. So if you like these types of talks and they're beneficial to you, consider subscribing or better yet, hit that share button and send it to someone that you think might benefit from this type of content. So until next time, go innovate your production.